Hi guys, um, we are talking about lesson 1.2 now, segment and angle addition. We're going to talk a lot about how to name angles. It's something we haven't talked about before. It's really important. Um, but let's just start off talking about segments. Um, we looked at lines before. Remember, segments are just a portion of a line. So when we are looking at this, for example, um, we're going to start by talking about the distance. So the distance between two points, A and B, can be written as the length of AB. So you'll notice that AB has that hat, right? We're talking about a segment, so it doesn't have arrows. It's, it's got that nice hat, though. Um, instead of writing length, though, we can just write AB without a hat. When we talk about AB and no hat, that always means distance. So in our little picture here, we've got A at negative 1 and B at 3. So I can count over, and it is 4 units long. Um, I know you guys have been measuring for a really long time. I'm not going to spend too much on it. It's also known as the ruler postulate, in case you're curious. Congruent segments. So if we know the length of AB is congruent or is equal to the length of CD, then we can say that they are congruent. And we use this symbol here. So we write that AB segment is congruent to CD segment with our little hats. Um, and think about it this way. It's really similar to saying their lengths are equal. The only difference is that everything has hats. The equal sign has this little teal day hat. Um, a, B has a hat, and C, D has a hat, right? So no hats is equal in distance. With a hat means that they're congruent. And congruent just means that you can literally cut out A, B here, and it would perfectly fit on top of C, D, like a glove. It perfectly fits. That's what congruent means. Congruent has no length associated with it. It just means that when you put one on top of the other, it matches perfectly. That's all it means. So now that we're feeling good about measuring and about congruence, let's talk about some segment addition. So we have segment AB here, and we have segment BC. If A, B, and C are collinear points, and B is between A and C, then we can say that AB plus BC equals AC. Now this is where you guys look at me and you go, dumb as frish. That's obvious. I know, I'm with you, but in geometry, we have to give definitions to these things. We write them down, they become theorems, and then we use them in our proofs, in our reasoning. All right, geometry is all based on reasoning and using logic. So I get it if you're looking at me going, well, duh. You're right, it is a little bit of a duh. But nonetheless, this is the segment addition postulate, and we will be using it as time goes on, um, especially when I ask you to justify. This could be one of the reasons that you use to justify something. So let's take a look at some of our examples that we have. We've got points P, Q, and R. They're all collinear. Um, and we want to use this diagram for questions 1 and 2. We know that P, Q is 9 and Q, R is 28. We want to find P, R. When we are given something like this, we always start with our geometric statement. All right, so I'm not going to start with a bunch of numbers and X's and things. I'm going to start with our segment addition postulate, but in this case, it will be for P, Q, and R instead of A, B, and C. So we have P, Q plus Q, R, and it's equal to P, R. Once I have this down, now I can start plugging in numbers. All right, don't do numbers first. I know you're looking at me going, but this is easy. I understand. Stick with the geometry of it, though, because this right here is worth a third of the points on any quiz. So PQ plus QR equals PR. Well, PQ, we just said, was 9. QR, we said, was 28. And we want to find PR. Well, 9 plus 28 is 37. So PR equals 37. I'm not going to make you check it. That's just fine. So for number two here, we have QR is 17, PR is 21, we want to find PQ. So we have PQ plus QR is equal to PR. Again, my statement, the segment addition postulate, is the same for both of them. So that's the nice thing about this, is I start off with the same uh, statement. Then I want to plug in my numbers. So we have a QR here, which is 17 and PR, which is 21, we want to find PQ. So I'm going to leave my PQ here, and our plus sign I wrote equals, but it should be plus. I want to get PQ by itself, so I need to subtract 17 on both sides. 
going way back to algebra, I told you we're still going to be solving for unknowns. So we have PQ is equal to 21 minus 17 is 4. Let's throw in some variables, though. Let's see what we get then. So for our next one here, we want to find the value of x. We know the EG, this whole thing, is 71. So I'm going to start off with my segment addition postulate. So I have EF plus FG is equal to EG. Now I'm going to substitute in the values for them. So EF is 8x minus 17. FG is 5x minus 3. And then EG, it told us, was 71. Let's combine some like terms. We've got 8x here and 5x there. So that is 13x. And then we have minus 17 minus 3, so that's minus 20 is equal to 71. I'm going to add 20 on both sides because the opposite of minus is adding. So we have 13x is equal to 91. Now, to get x by itself, I need to divide both sides by 13. 91 divided by 13, that gets us an x equals 7. I'm not going to make you check it. You obviously could, though. But that is our final answer, is x equals 7. So, let's do our next one here. So we have if JL is equal to 5x plus 2, find LJ. Oh, find the length of JL. Got it. So we have, I don't know why I read that wrong, segment JK plus KL is equal to JL. And then we're going to plug in what we know next. So JK we know is 27. KL is 3x minus 1. And then JL, this whole thing, is 5x plus 2. I'm going to combine some like terms here. So I have 26, or 27 minus 1 is 26, plus 3x is equal to 5x plus 2. I am going to subtract 3x on both sides. So I have 26 equals 2x plus 2. Then I subtract 2 on both sides, so I have 24 equals 2x. Next, I need to divide by 2, which means my x is equal to 12. Now, that didn't tell us how long JL is. I actually have to plug that 12 back in. So JL is equal to 3x minus 1. So that means we have 3 times 12 minus 1. 3 times 12 is 36 minus 1 is 35. So JL is 35. All right. Our next one down here says if SK equals 13X minus 5, KY equals 2X plus 9, and SY equals 36 minus X, find each value. So we need to figure out what X is and then find each of them. So I have SK plus KY is equal to SY. I start with my segment addition postulate, and then I plug in what I know. So we have 13x minus 5 plus 2x plus 9 is equal to 36 minus x. Let's combine some like terms here. So I've got 15x. Negative 5 plus 9 is a positive 4 is equal to 36 minus x. I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides, so I get 15x equals 32 minus x, and I'm going to add x on both sides, 1x specifically. So I have 16x equals 32. I divide 16 on both sides. That means I'm left with x equals 2. So now that I know x is 2, I can find everything out. So we know that sk is equal to 13x minus 5. So that would be 13. I plug in my 2 for x. 13 times 2 is 26, minus 5 is 21. So SK equals 21. Um, KY is next. So we have 2X plus 9. So 2 times 2 plus 9. So that would be 4 plus 9, which is 13 for KY. 
And then for SY, we have 36 minus X. So that would be 36 minus 2, which is 34. So SY is 34. All right. The next part of today's lesson is talking about angles. All right, talking about angles. So we've got angle A and angle B here. Um, if the measure, that's what this little M stands for, is measure. If the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B, so they both measure, in this case, 75 degrees, then we say that they're congruent. And again, congruent is that little hat symbol. This is written as angle A is congruent to angle B. All right, so no M's here, just angle. Um, sometimes you'll see me draw these with a little whooshy through, like a little, little swooshy um, through the angle. So if I write it like this, angle A, or if I write it like this, angle A, I mean the same thing. Um, I do this sometimes because that's what happens when I draw it with a protractor. So, so that's how we write that they're congruent. Um, we talked about segment additions. So now we're going to talk about angle addition. And when we name an angle, it's really, really important. Uh, whatever our vertex is goes in the middle. So angle A, B, D plus angle D, B, C is equal to angle A, B, C. It doesn't matter if it's A, B, C or C, B, A. All right, that is all the same angle or D, B, C or C, B, D. That's all the same angle, all right? But the vertex needs to go in the middle. That's what's really important. So you can see in all of these, our vertex is in the middle. So this is really similar, right? If we have a part and a part, it makes the whole thing. That's all that this is saying. When we take a look at our first example here, we have, um, I use the same picture to try and keep it simple because I don't want you getting too hung up on naming angles. It's a little weird and we're going to get more into it. So we've got the measure of angle ABD. Angle ABD plus angle DBC is equal to angle ABC. Um, we want to find the measure of angle ABC. So we are starting with 48 for ABD and 78 for DBC, and we want to find angle ABC. So when I add these together, I get 126 is equal to the measure of angle ABC. So for our next one here, again, we're starting off with our angle addition postulate. So we have angle ABD plus angle DBC is equal to angle ABC. Angle ABD, it tells us, is what we're looking for. So I'm just going to leave it, ABD. Um, they told us that angle DBC is 74 degrees and the measure of angle ABC is 119 degrees. I want to get angle ABD by itself. I need to subtract 74 degrees from both sides. So we have angle ABD is equal to 45 degrees. So let's try the next two and then we'll be done with notes for today. So we've got the measure of angle JKM, JKM, it's 43 degrees. The measure of angle MKL is 8x minus 20, and the measure of JKL is 10x minus 11. We want to find each measure. So let's start by writing our angle addition postulate for this angle. We know that it's going to equal angle JKL, right, because that's the big angle. So our first little angle I'm going to write is angle J. KM, that's this angle right here, and then we want angle MKL or LKM. So now that we have our angle addition, I can plug in values. Angle JKM is 43 degrees, MKL is 8x minus 20, and then JKL is 10x minus 11. Let's try and combine some like terms. I see that I have 43 minus 20 here. So we can do 23 plus 8x is equal to 10x minus 11. I'm going to subtract 8x on both sides. So we have 2x minus 11. 
And then I'm going to add 11 on both sides. So we have 2x is equal to 34. Now to get x by itself, I need to divide by 2. So we have x equals 17. Now that I know that my x is 17, for angle JKL, I can plug in 17 for x. So we have 10 times 17 minus 11. Well, that's 170 minus 11. So that would be 159 for angle JKL. 159 degrees. And then for angle MKL, we have 8x minus 20. We're going to plug in 17 times 8 and subtract 20 from that. So we end up with 136 minus 20. So we get 116 degrees. All right, the very last one. We have angle TUV or VUT, doesn't matter, right? Um, is our big angle. And then it's made up of two little angles, TUW and WUV. So angle TUW plus angle WUV. And then they tell us some things about these angles. So angle TUW has a value of 5x plus 3 degrees. Angle WUV has an angle of 10x minus 5. And then angle TUV is 17x minus 16. We want to find each measure, and we're going to have to start by finding x. So let me combine some like terms. I see on the left here I have 15x, and then positive 3 and a negative 5 gets me a negative 2. Our right side didn't change at all. Um, I'm going to end up subtracting 15x from both sides so I can get x by itself. So we have negative 2 is equal to 2x minus 16. Make sure you keep that negative. Don't lose the negative, okay? Don't drop it. And then we want to add 16 on both sides. So negative 2 plus 16 is a positive 14. It's equal to 2x. We need to divide by 2 to get x by itself, and we are left with 7. So we know our x is 7. Now we have to find the measure of each angle. So angle TUW is 5x plus 3. So that would be 5 times 7 plus 3. Well, 5 times 7 is 35, plus 3 is 38. WV is next. Angle WV, which is 10x minus 5. We found that x was 7, so we have 10 times 7, which is 70 minus 5. 70 minus 5 is 65. And then the last angle is angle TUV, which is 17x minus 16. So that would be 17 times 7 minus 16. Um, that's 119 minus 16. So we would get 103. Um, another option for finding this one is you could just take 38 plus 65 to get it, right? So that works too. All right, that is the end of our first day of notes for this. Please email me if you have questions. There are skills practice on big ideas.